to learn how to make the enchanted crochet motif shawl. This is a beautiful shawl designed with red heart unforgettable yarn. The colors are spectacular. You can wear this accessory in the spring or fall anytime you choose. Let's let Robin show us how to make this fun motif. Today we're going to be making this beautiful motif from the enchanted motif shawl. It is one of my absolute favorites with all of this lacy details, but I won't lie, these little stitches on round two that we're going to lovingly love, they're actually Y stitches, are so much fun. So to get started, we start in the center just like every stitch diagram, and we're going to be doing these treble clusters on round one. Round two, we go around and we get to do these beautiful Y stitches. And we're going to look into deep detail on that. Round three changes it into a square. Round four cleans it off even more. And then round five is really our joining round. This is where we'll be joining all of our motifs together. But let's get started right in the center and look at what we're doing. So we will be starting with our adjustable ring and then moving on from there. And we do a single crochet, chain three, cluster, chain three. We repeat that little grouping four times. So let's look and see what that looks like. So we're gonna start with an adjustable ring. And do an adjustable ring however you like to. This is how I do mine. I will wrap the yarn around so that the tail is under the working yarn. The working yarn is attached to your ball. And then with my hook, I will come under, grab the working yarn, and pop it to the front. So it twists it around. Then I remove my hook because it was holding it like this, which is fine, it just adds another twist but I remove it, replace it, and then chain one to lock it into place. And now I have a circle or a ring that I can work in. And again, if you like doing it a different way, go ahead. This is just how I do it. Now let's get into that round one. The first thing we're gonna do is do a single crochet into the round. So I just insert my hook into that ring, pull up a loop from behind, yarn over. I have two stitches on my hook, a yarn over, pull through those two, single crochet. Now I'm going to do my chain three. And I'm All right, now we're ready for our cluster. This cluster is made up of trebles. So to get started, we're going to yarn over twice, insert our hook into the ring, pull up a loop. So you have four loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over, pull through two, and do it again, yarn over, pull through two. When you get to the last two loops on your hook, you're going to pause. And if we look, it's really nice with trebles. You can see it's like you were almost completed a full treble. You got the nice long leg. Well, to do a cluster, you could do as many as you want. In our case, it's only two. You're going to make another one of these, another leg, and then join them together at the top. So let me show you. You're going to yarn over twice. So just ignore that this is still on your hook. Insert your hook into the ring, pull up a loop. Now you have five loops on your hook. You're gonna yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And when you have three loops left on your hook, you pause. Now, if you look at it, is you have one, two legs of trebles. For us, we just have a two-legged treble. You could have more, you could have less. But now what we've gotten to here, we're going to yarn over and pull through those three loops on your hook. It smushes them all together, joins those legs together at the top, and makes this little oval. Now we chain three, because essentially we want to go back down. It's like we climbed up a mountain, 
to do our cluster. Now we got to climb back down because now we're going to repeat all of those directions again. We're going to do a single crochet. So insert your hook into the ring, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Now chain three, one, two, three, and we're going to do our cluster again. So yarn over twice, insert your hook into the ring, pull up a loop. We got those four loops again, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And let's do it again. That's our first leg. Yarn over twice, insert your hook into the ring, pull up a loop. You got five loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now we have two legs and three loops left on our hook. We're going to yarn over, pull through all of those three. Chain three. to essentially get us back down the hill. We just repeat that twice more. Now we are all the way back at the beginning and we have these four petals or these four circles or four ovals. What we'll do is take the loop on our hook and we want to join it to the very first single crochet. We're going to do that with a slip stitch. So you just insert your hook. There is two top loops at this single crochet. Now, if it's hard to find it, don't worry. Just insert your hook anywhere into this first single crochet. It will naturally want to pull into those two top loops. But let's be honest, if you split the single crochet instead and put it in that way, no one will notice. It's just a slip stitch. So insert your hook, yarn over, pull through the stitch and the loop on your hook. Now, this doesn't look pretty, does it? Because we have to do one last thing on this round, and this is taking your tail and pulling it closed. So what I like to do is I like to have a gentle hold on my work for my round one, and I will put my thumb over the hole. That way it's not pulling out. It's almost like I'm, I'm going to be guiding with my thumb where it's going. So I'm going to move it to the side just so you can see, and you just gently pull and it will reduce that hole. I like mine to be real, real tight, real close together. If you like the little hole in the middle, that's fine. When we're all done, we'll weave these this in so it's nice and secure. Turn it back over to the right side. And now we have our adorable center and it looks beautiful. Round two. Let's bring back our diagram and see what we're doing. As I was mentioning earlier, this is my favorite part where we get to do some beautiful stitches. They are called Y stitches and they are these beautiful stitches over here, which is this gorgeous double treble with the chain and then a double crochet that goes into it. These guys are just a ton of fun. And we'll pay special attention on this round of how to do them. Because of where we ended, we have to start with what is basically a fake Y stitch. 
these double trebles plus a double crochet into them, they're called a Y stitch because they look like a Y. If you think of it, they look like a Y. But we can't have that here. So just know that when you're doing this round, the beginning and the end are not really keeping in time with the pattern. So we'll just pay attention to that as we go. So let's get crocheting. Let's look and see what this looks like. From here, what we'll be doing is we will be chaining seven. And this gets us a really, it gets us really, really tall. And that's what the guide here, this beginning chain is just to get you very, very tall because we need to get all the way to the top of here. And we're going to be doing tall stitches up here too. So this chain seven counts as a double treble and a chain two space. So it counts as quite a lot. All right. This is now starting is where it really starts to repeat. What we'll be doing is we're going to be placing a double crochet, chain five, double crochet in the top of your cluster. So yarn over once, insert your hook into the top of your cluster, pull up a loop, you got three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now, chain five and do another double crochet in the same spot. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Next, you'll chain two to give you a little bit of space before you do these fun Y stitches I keep talking about. The very first thing you do for the Y stitch is you do a double treble. This is where you yarn over three times. You're going to insert your hook into the single crochet. Pull up a loop. You have five loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over, pull through two, all the way across or until they're all off, which is four times. And look, we made quite a tall stitch. And I want you to pause and look at it. Those three yarn overs that we have, we did at the beginning, they are right here. One, two, three. These are those diagonal lines in your stitch. They will come in handy in a second. The next part is to chain five. This gets you across the top. Now, this is what makes it a Y stitch. What we're gonna be doing is inserting, we're gonna be making a double crochet, but we're gonna be inserting our hook in the center of the double treble you just made. The easiest way to find the center is locate those one, two, three yarn overs and find the center one. It's the easiest way of finding it. It's why they come in really handy. Where you're going to be inserting is you're just basically going to be dividing this post in half. So I like to grab two strands of this post to secure my stitch. What stitch we're doing again is a double crochet. So we're going to yarn over just once. I'm inserting my hook. And for me, I'm going to go insert my hook under the yarn over and one strand next to it. And if I pull it apart, when you pull it apart, you'll see that you have two strands on this side and two strands on this side. You could also look at it as you're piercing right through the center of your post. So yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That is how you make your Y stitch. And when you're all done, it looks like this magical stitch that has a double crochet on this side, double crochet on this side, and somehow a double crochet down here. It's why I love them. But don't worry if you didn't catch it, we're going to do it again. So we chain two to get to the top of our next petal and we repeat the directions. So we're gonna do a double crochet in the top of the next cluster, chain five, and then do a double crochet in the exact same spot. Chain two, 
And now we're ready for our fancy Y stitch. So it starts off again with a double treble, which means three yarn overs. Insert your hook into the next single crochet, which is all the way down here. Pull up a loop. You have five loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over, pull through two, four times to work that all the way off. You pause and look and say, okay, there's one, two, three. Those are my three yarn overs. I'll be inserting my hook into the center of this post here. You're going to chain five, and now we will be putting a double crochet into the center of the double of the double treble just made. So remember, we're not going around this post. We're piercing. We're stabbing right through the center. And how I like to do it is I locate that yarn over and then grab one other strand. It's basically a vertical strand that goes along for the ride. And it has cut it in the center, if you can see. It's right in the middle of that post. To yarn over, pull up a loop. So it will be anchoring my stitch. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And it has now completely anchored that stitch beautifully. Then we repeat those directions again with when you get to the next petal, you have chain two, and we start again. We do our double crochet in the top of the next cluster, our chain five, then our double crochet in the top of the cluster again, chain two, now we're going to do our double treble. We'll do our Y stitch. So I need three yarn overs. Insert my hook into the single crochet. Pull up a loop. Yarn over. Pull through two. Four times. To get my nice tall stitch. Chain five. Do my double crochet into the middle of the double treble just made. chain two, double crochet into the top of the next petal, chain five, double crochet in the same spot, chain two. Now this is where what we have been doing changes because we don't have a double treble here. We have the really tall beginning chain. So this is where we're going to be using other stitches to mimic what we've been doing in these Y stitches down here. So to do that, what we're gonna be doing is doing a double crochet into the third chain of the beginning chain. So one, two, three, I'll do just a regular double crochet. And if you look, this kind of looks like part of the Y stitch. This looks like one arm, that's the other arm, and then that's the leg, just like arm, arm, leg. But now we need this part. So this part was made up of a chain five. But for us, I don't want to be down where my finger is here. I don't want to be down here. I want to be at the top of the mountain. So this is where it also has another change. And to do this, we chain two. Skip the next chain and put a double crochet into the following chain. And what that gets us is something that mimics close to what we have here. We'll be at the top of the mountain for when we start round three, which transforms this diamond into our square. And that is your round two. Now on to round three. 
bringing back in our stitch diagram. Like I said, we are going to take this diamond and transform it into a square. So this was our diamond in round two, and now we will transform it into a square by doing all of these trebles in every other, there's a chain five space, in every other chain five space. So we'll have really tall stitches to make a corner, and then these little half doubles on the other chain five spaces to shorten it all up. These have, there's nothing exciting. We have trebles and half doubles. We haven't done them in this motif yet, but nothing about these stitches are different or unique. They're just knowing where the stitches go. So understanding that we have these, all these stitches going into one to make this fat corner and then you just repeat it. So what does this look like while we're crocheting? All right, let's take a look. To get started, what I like to do is when you're looking at these, these here will be your corners because it's really easy to look at like, oh, well, here's my triangle. So these must be my corners. No, no you're putting a diamond inside of a triangle. So what you want to think about is, you know, you need to keep this diamond shape going. So these are your corners. These is where, this is where all of those trebles will be. On the top and bottom and two sides, this is where your half doubles were, are going to be going, the short ones. So to get started, we're going to chain five. This will count as a half double and a chain three. And we only do it here just to get us tall and to get us over. Now we're at our first chain five space that we're going to put lots of stitches in. This is gonna be our corner. To do it, we're going to be doing trebles. So we're going, trebles are where you yarn over twice, insert your hook into the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. And in this repeat, we do a treble, chain one. We do another treble, chain one, another treble, chain three. This space will become your corner next time. And now we need to make this symmetrical. So we need to do a treble, chain one, treble, chain one, treble. So if you take a look at it, what we have is we have three, then a chain three space and three. So it's six trebles all going into one spot. It's a lot. So every other chain five space has that and that was what will make us our corner. Now we're going to chain three to get over to here to our next chain five space you are skipping all of these chain two spaces in between everything, you skip all of them. They don't matter to us. We only care about these big chain five spaces on this round. Here we're going to be doing a half double. So that's where you yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, pull up a loop. You have three loops on your hook. You yarn over, pull through all three. That's how you make a half double. Chain three. And now we repeat our directions again. Skip all this and you're gonna go to your very next chain five space. Yarn over twice. Insert your hook into the chain five space. Pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two, three times. Chain one, another treble. Yarn over twice, insert hook. Pull through two, three times. Chain one. Yarn over twice, insert your hook, pull up a loop, 
Yarn over, pull through two. Three times. We have our three trebles. Now we chain three. A lot of threes. Again, this will become your corner. And now we need to do another three trebles separated by a chain one. Now we have another corner done. If we just pop it down to look, now we're starting to look like we have a different shape. Chain three, our next half double. chain three, and now we repeat. Completed all four corners. Now we are ready to join. You will chain three and you're going to slip stitch to the second chain of the beginning chain. So one, two, we'll slip stitch right here. And we have finished round three. We have taken our diamond, which was right here, and transformed it into a square. It really finishes off. It looks really beautiful. All right. Now moving into round four. Let's take a look at what we have going on in round four. All right, round four really solidifies this square shape that we have going on. And what happens is we will be putting these groups of three double crochets in these chain three spaces with a chain three in between them to really draw out that corner. And then throughout the side, we'll be putting these double crochets pretty evenly spaced with some chain spaces around them. There is nothing exciting about this round. All that it does is just make it a little bit more square, a little bit more structured. So let's take a look at what it looks like while we're crocheting it. Just start with, because we're starting in the center, we'll start with a chain six. It's going to count as a double crochet plus chain three space. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So the first three will be considered our double crochet, and then these three will be considered our chain three space. Then we're going to do a double crochet in the first treble that we come across. Put a double crochet in there. Now, 
we will chain four to move us all the way over to our first corner over here. In our first, in our corners, we'll be putting three double crochets, three chain spaces, and three more double crochets. So let's do our double crochets. We have three of them. Now a chain three, which will make another corner. And another three double crochets. So putting all six of these stitches in one corner really makes that corner stand out so much. Now we chain four to get us over to the last treble all the way over here. And this is where we'll put a double crochet. Chain three. Skip this chain three space and put a double crochet in our half double. Chain three. Skip the chain three space, put a double crochet into our next treble. So the way it works out is that we always have this chain four space, our corner, chain four space, and then double crochet, chain three, double crochet, chain three, double crochet. So you have three double crochets separated by chain three. And if you look below, we had chain threes here and we're still skipping the same chain three. And row four, you just repeat that all the way around. We are all done with round four. You can see that it is a definite square now. Now it's time to move on to round five. But before we do that, round five is this unique round where you only make, if you're making the enchanted motif shawl, you only make one full complete motif. All of the rest, round five is this magical round where you will be doing all of these great chain five spaces, but joining them together at the same time. And you can do it in any shape or form that you want. 
in the directions, you'll see we have very specific joining directions done. But the whole concept behind this is that you're going to be joining every corner. These are chain seven corners. And you're going to be joining every chain five space. There is six per side together. So whenever you're doing a chain five, you're going to be joining along this edge and you need to join the corners. So you can join it in the manner that's written or you don't have to. You can do it, do it in any method just as long as your corners are joined and all of your sides are joined. So let's take a look at the stitch diagram for joining. As you can see, it's the motifs that we've been doing. So it's like you're going to think about that I have three motifs. Like look at it as like I have one, two, three, and then you will be joining this one. Or look at it as what we're going to be doing is we're going to be joining this one and I already have this one done. What happens here is in your regular motif, all that it is is a single crochet and then a chain five space, a single crochet and a chain five space, all the way until you get to the corner where you have a chain seven space. When you're joining, instead of like say a chain seven space, you have chain three and then you slip stitch. You slip stitch join to the other corner. Then you chain three again. So if you think of it, what you'll have is you have, normally it's a chain seven, right? Instead, you have a chain three, slip stitch, which is really just a chain in something, and then a chain three. So if you add up the math, it's three plus one plus three. That's how you get your seven. So it's really doing the same thing. It's just that you are putting a slip stitch instead of a chain right in the middle. The same thing goes true for all of the sides. You'll have chain two, slip stitch, chain two. So instead of a chain five, you have a chain five join, which is chain two, slip stitch, chain two. So two plus one plus two equals five. And that's what you do all the way around to join them. So let's look and see what does that actually look like on our motifs. So I have one motif here for us. That's all done. So this is going to be the one that we're going to join and we're going to say, well, let's join, we're going to be joining this edge. You would use when you're doing any kind of motif layout, you use the layout that it comes and you join it to whatever side to make whatever shape you're doing. For us, for this, we're just going to join this side. We're going to join two corners and one edge going down. On our work, which means is that what we need to do for this is we need to get to the first corner that we would come to so that we can join this corner and this whole edge and this corner to join these two together. Now, on your joining motif, if you're just joining one side, you could join this side, you could join this side, you could join this side. What I mean is you can join wherever, whatever edge you want to join to, you can join um, in the directions. You basically, when you're only doing a one-sided join, it's going to have you just do chain five spaces all the way to here and then join this edge. So it's like the last thing you do. But what I'm telling you is it does not matter if it's the very first thing you do or the very last thing you do when it comes to joining. Either way works. 
So we're going to join right away, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You could do it either way. All right. So let's look at the directions. What we have is we will be doing a single crochet in the same space. We need to chain one at the same space as our last join. Now we're going to chain five and single crochet into the next double crochet. Then chain five, single crochet into the next chain four space. Chain five, Now we're going to be going into our corner. And for us, I'm going to join us right away. What happens on all of these is you will be doing a chain five, single crochet into each one of your doubles, chain five, single crochet into each of your chain four spaces, and then do a single crochet, chain seven in your corners. But I'm going to start joining right away just so you have a different way of doing it. So you have multiple ways. You can follow the diagram, you can follow the indirections, or you can do it this way. It doesn't matter whatever feels comfortable for you when you're working. So I'm going to join this side right away. To do that, I finish my chain five and I do my single crochet in the corner. What happens in the corner is we want a single crochet, chain seven, single crochet. But instead of the chain seven, I'm going to do a chain seven join. And to do that, I chain three. Now I'm going to slip stitch to the first corner of my motif. So I insert my hook, pull up a loop, pull through the loop on my hook. And if you look at it, that slip stitch looks exactly like that chain because they are, they're the same stitch. It's just a slip stitch is into something and a chain is in the air. Now I'm going to chain three. So if I look at this is really these corners are made up of chain seven and it lots what it looks like. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven stitches. So this join is the same as chaining seven. To finish off this corner, I'm going to do a single crochet in the same space to make a corner. So if I pause and look, what we'll be doing is I made this corner, which looks just like this corner, but it's now joined. And we can think of ourselves as kind of like a zipper from here on out. We're going to chain two, join, chain two, single crochet, chain two, join, chain two, single crochet, back and forth till I get to my corner. All right, the easiest way is to put us up like this so you can see what I'm doing as I'm doing it. And I'm going to chain two, then slip stitch to the next chain five space, chain two, count all those stitches, one, two, three, four, five, that chain five join is just like a chain five space. And then come back to my round and I do a single crochet in the chain four space chain two, slip stitch to the next chain five space, chain two, single crochet to the next double crochet on the motif I'm working on, chain two, slip stitch to the next chain five space of the adjacent motif, chain two, single crochet to the next double crochet. Chain two, and let's just pause for a minute so we can look and see what this is looking like. What happens is it almost acts like a little zipper and how they are all joined together. It's like I'm overlaying the one on top of the other and so they are joined together. So doing that chain two, 
join, chain two, single crochet, chain two, join, chain two, single crochet, over and over, connects these guys together, but still gives the same effect as that we have on the side. So let's finish up this side. It's time for our next join. Single crochet into the next double crochet. Chain two. Single slip stitch into the next chain five space. Chain two. Single crochet into the next chain four space. Chain two. Slip stitch to the next chain five space. Chain two. Single crochet to the next corner. So then again, if we look, we would have one, two, three, four, five, six chain five spaces going along, same as these guys. And so now we're ready for our next corner. So to do the corner here, I have a single crochet in the corner. Now I'm going to chain three, single slip stitch to the next corner. Chain three and single crochet back to that same corner to join it. Now these two are joined together. This now acts as one piece. To finish this motif, all that I do is continue doing my chain five single crochets and then chain sevens in the corner back around to the beginning. But the whole joining is now all done. So you completely ignore that they're now together and you just finish off your work over here by putting a single crochet in each one of the chain four spaces and a single crochet in each one of the double crochets. And of course, they're all separated by these chain five spaces. And that is your unique round five joining all at the same time. You would just continue working all the way around. Okay, with that, you now know how to do the motifs for the Enchanted Crochet Motif Shawl.